Let's turn today to Matthew's Gospel in chapter 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish and five were prudent or wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the prudent or the wise took oil in flasks along with their lamps. This is a continuation of Jesus' answer to his disciples who had asked him in Matthew 24 verse 3 concerning the signs that would precede the second coming of Jesus Christ to earth. And in this context, Jesus not only gave them the signs that we studied in Matthew 24, but he also showed them how they could be ready for his coming. It's no use studying prophecy if we don't understand how to be ready for the second coming of Christ. And we can say that Matthew chapter 25 is dealing with being ready, just like Matthew chapter 24 was dealing with the signs that would indicate the second coming of Christ. The prophetic details are in Matthew 24. The spiritual preparation and the way to it is described in Matthew chapter 25. And so, if we stop with Matthew 24 and have no interest in understanding Matthew 25, we will not be ready for the coming of the Lord and we shall certainly not be taken up if we are not spiritually prepared. And so, Matthew 25 is very important. It's a very important part of our study of the second coming of Christ. Unfortunately, most believers are interested more in the prophetic details. And they would read books and go to lectures that explain the prophetic details. But the very fact that they don't have much interest in being spiritually prepared for the Lord's coming shows that they are immature. And it also shows that those who are teaching them are immature too. For Jesus never stopped at the end of Matthew 24. He continues to tell his disciples how they can be ready for his coming. And so we see here in Matthew 25 and verse 1, Jesus spoke about ten virgins. Now, whenever we study a parable, we can only get the spiritual truth out of it and not try to be dogmatic, trying to interpret every detail. Many people get into a lot of false theology and wrong doctrines by trying to interpret every little detail of a parable. Very often a parable was meant to highlight one or two main truths. And we need to see a parable like that and not allow our imagination to run riot and to begin to interpret every detail. Because a man with a wild imagination can interpret it in so many different ways. We don't get our theology from the interpretation of parables. It's very dangerous to get theology by the way you interpret a parable because another clever person may interpret it in another way. We can get spiritual truths out of it that can give us a spiritual readiness in our heart. But doctrine is more clearly laid down in the plain statements of Scripture. Here we can say that these ten virgins are a picture of those who outwardly have a good life. A virgin, we can say, is one who has a good testimony on the outside. And the lamp speaks of the same thing. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And all ten had lamps. It speaks of Christians who have a good external testimony. Men think highly of them because their lights are burning, their good works are seen. And they go out to meet the bridegroom. It is obvious these are Christians because they are going out to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, their bridegroom. The Jews did not go out to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. They crucified him. Nobody else goes out to meet the Lord. These are Christians going out to meet the bridegroom. The only difference was that five of them were foolish and five were wise. It didn't have anything to do with their external testimony, which was very good. 
But the difference was that the foolish did not take lamps, oil in their lamps. The wise took oil along with their lamps. The foolish did not take that extra flask of oil which the wise took. And this was the thing that made the difference. It says here that the bridegroom delayed and they all began to be drowsy and to sleep. That did not disqualify them. That was physical tiredness. But at midnight there was a shout. Behold the bridegroom come out to meet him. This is the signs that we have seen. You know that his coming is near, that he's at the door. The shout that we hear from the signs that are happening around us. The bridegroom is coming. Get ready to meet him. And then everybody woke up. And they trimmed their lamps, which indicates that all the virgins had lamps that were burning. It was not that the lamps of the foolish were not burning. They were burning too. It says they all trimmed their lamps and the foolish said, Give us some of your oil, they asked the wise, because our lamps are going out. So they did have some oil in their lamps, but they did not have an extra flask of oil. And their lamps were dying out. And they came to the wise and said, Give us of your oil. But the wise replied, saying, No, lest there be not enough for us and you too. Go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. Here we see some things. One is that one brother cannot give his oil to another. It is impossible. It is an inner life that the oil speaks of. A life in Christ that we have come to through faithfulness. It says here that it is something we have to buy, verse 9. Something that we don't get free like forgiveness of sins, but something that we have to buy. Something that we get from the dealers, from the circumstances and trials of life. Those are the dealers where we get oil, content in our inner life. And each one has to get for himself. One cannot buy for another. We know that one brother cannot pass on his life to another. We can pass on the word of God. But the life of Jesus we have to acquire ourselves. Second Corinthians 4.10 says, If we are faithful in bearing the dying of Jesus in our body, then the life of Jesus also will be manifested in our body. In the trials of life, if I am willing to take up my cross and deny myself and take up my cross and follow Jesus and die to myself, I can receive the life of Jesus, Second Corinthians 4.10 tells me, and that is the oil, the life of Jesus that gives me a spiritual content. And it says here in verse 10, while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came. What was it that exposed the emptiness of these foolish virgins? It was the delay of the bridegroom. He who endures until the end will be saved. The one who has a life that carries him through. The one who doesn't merely have a form. We can say that the five foolish virgins had a form. They were religious, but they were not spiritual. The five wise virgins were spiritual. And there's a vast difference between religiosity and spirituality. There's a vast difference between having the form and having the life. Many people have the form. Very few have the life. In the final day, what will matter is not whether you had the form or not, but whether you have the life or not. That is going to be the thing. If you have the life of Jesus, you will have sufficient oil to carry you through till the very end. If you have acquired that oil and not been content merely with a form. So we can say that it is very dangerous to merely have a good testimony before men. To have our lamps burning before men. To have a testimony that we are virgins and men thinking highly of us. And all the while we don't have this inner life. In other words, our private life is not like our outer life. Our outer life appears much bigger and greater and more spiritual in the eyes of men than our inner life. 
this is an extremely dangerous condition to be in. It says here that because the bridegroom delayed in verse 5, the oil ran out. And that was what exposed them. And then when the bridegroom came, those who were ready, verse 10, went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut. This is not merely referring to those who live in the last days. There have been foolish virgins even in the first century and second and third and fourth in all centuries. Whether they lived in the last century before the coming of the Lord is irrelevant. The principle applies in all centuries. Later the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. He answered and said, I do not know you. I have not had a personal relationship with you. Based on life, you were taken up with a form. And then he went on to say, be on the alert then, for you do not know the day or the hour. How shall we be on the alert? By making sure that our emphasis is not on the form of godliness, but on the power of godliness. We could look at this verse in Second Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 5 in this connection, in connection with this parable, where Jesus said, where Paul says to Timothy concerning the last days, many in those days will hold to a form of godliness and deny its power. There is a difference between the form of godliness and the power of godliness. The foolish virgins had the form. The wise virgins had the power. The power is the life of Jesus. Do we need the form? Yes. For the Wise virgins had that too, but within that vessel was oil, and that is the important thing. Our outer life must correspond to our inner life, and our inner life to our outer life. Then there is the form filled with the power, and this is how we shall be ready for the coming of Christ.